Greetings, friends. It's another episode of California Preach, and I don't even think this really needs an introduction. Uh, well, one of my favorite brother-in-laws, if not my favorite, the yeah. Stephen Baldwin is with us today, and we are going to uh, have an amazing chat about God, family, life, death, um, and just those very light little topics. <laughs> Just those Let's start with death. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> death to self. Death Amen. to self. Amen. Well, I was just saying that in the car right up here, I was just saying that, you know, the Bible says that we pass from death to life and that, um, that, you know, is something that I take very seriously that I've already died. Like I've already been crucified with Christ. I've already been nailed to the cross. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. And newsflash None of that would have happened if it hadn't been for your anointing and for yours and Kenya's conversion to Christ. And I was, I did accept Jesus when I was 12, but I recommitted myself to the Lord when uh, Stephen and Kenya basically were like, let us pray over you. <laughs> and they just put their hands over my head at the kitchen table in my house. And, um, I think I, I felt, have a slightly different version of the story, but please continue. I felt the spirit descend upon my body, and at that moment I grabbed my Buddha that was at my front door that Kenya used to give dirty looks to, <laughs> his wife, and I wrapped it up in blankets and I put it in my garage, and I was like a changed woman that night. And then the next morning I went to church and I went to Kenya's Bible study. And anyways, this isn't about me. But I just wanted to let you know that because of this amazing human being right here and the Holy Spirit working through him, California preaching exists. So applaud, applaud, applaud. Amen. Let's go. Take the stage. Well... <laughs> I think you accepted Jesus a long time ago, but you engaged in a relationship with him on that encounter with me in Kenya. Absolutely. And I didn't realize he was an alive personal God. That's what you taught me. Yep. You didn't, you didn't, all, none of us really realizes he's the best friend you could ever have. Amen. Yeah. So um, what was cool for me was, as I recall that, that encounter, I remember King and I were at my mom's, uh, and we had prayed, for, or at my house. No, we were at my house in Bedford. But two of Beth's nieces were there. Two of Beth's kids were there. Okay. So the way the prayer thing started was two of our nieces said, hey, we're going through some stuff. Can we pray with you in Kenya? Yes. And we were in the kitchen. Yes, in Bedford, though. Right. Okay, yes. Okay. So then I remember when I say, tell your story that we were praying for my nieces, and when we were done saying good night to them and stuff, you kind of came out of this nook in the kitchen. Right. Or you kind of like must have come to get something yes. in the kitchen yes. and heard us praying. By the way, you are remembering correctly. Right. Okay. So I remember you walking in the room, tears coming down your face. Was I crying? Listen to the words. I don't know what that was you were just doing, but I know I need it. Which is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit causes that question. Yes. So, of course, I'm sitting there, and at that point I know you, but yes. not like I know you now. Right. You know? And I'm not as good of a Christian as my wife who is always hopeful and, you know, uh, uh, a servant and this, you know, I have a little tip on my shoulder, you know. So as you're kind of stepping into the room to kind of just say, like, you know, hey, pray for me, I'm totally, I'm not doubting. I'm just going, what, what's happening? Like, why is this moment happening? <laughs> so China sits down and Kenya and I are laying hands on her. We're praying and Kenya started. And, and then all of a sudden I started praying in tongues. Yeah. And... I was speaking in tongues, and I don't normally do that, and it's not something I can command, you know, like some people. Uh, uh, it's very authentic for me. Yeah. And uh, so the Holy Spirit starts going, she's going to give her life to me. And I'm going, <laughs> I'm sitting there, like, praying over you, and I'm going, I don't think so. Lord. And he's going, yeah. <laughs> and, he's going <laughs> and the Lord's going, no, 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 that's what's happening right now. I'm going, but you don't know China like I know. Like, I'm just in my, in your, no, but I'm like, you know those chat, you know, like you just start talking? I don't mean anything by it. I'm going, 
Lord, let's okay, maybe, but like you'll handle that. But I just think this is just like a kind of a flash in the pan. I'm the idiot, and I am doubting, but I'm not doubting on purpose. I'm doubting just because it's not making sense to me. Right. China, all of a sudden, the Lord says to me, because I led you to say the prayer. Yeah. And I'm sitting there going, and Kenya too, of course, but the prompting of it was so real. Yeah. You know, and I'm sitting there going, you know, hey, Chai, you know, God bless you. And you know, and have you ever? And you're like, yes. And then Kenya's like, you know, well, would you like to do it again? Now? And in the middle of that, I'm going, Lord, isn't it crazy? Yeah. Our heart was to just show up, never anticipating nieces saying that thing. Well, hey, could you guys pray for us because God hears your prayers? You know, like, <laughs> that's kind of who we are in the family. A little yeah. Bit, you yeah. know what I mean? And you too. It was a very profound, profound. Now you tell quick your baptism. What do you recall? About the baptism? In the bathtub. Well, kind of like your wedding day. It, it took four hours late. It happened four hours later than I expected. <laughs> Nana Hooch. We love you, Nana Hooch. The Brazilian brigade. Um, yeah, but I mean, you guys had bongo players there, guitar players there. You had people who I had no idea who they were praying. The bathtub was filled. There were candles. There was worship music. I mean, it, it was <laughs> it was the most remarkable experience. I, Kenya put me in a white gown, like pajamas, but it was like the most an antique, cotton, beautiful, white, pure as snow <laughs> dress. And she wanted me to be baptized in this dress. I get submerged and, you know, we say the prayers and then I get submerged in the water and I came up and all I remember is Billy's expression right. in the corner of the bathroom, right. tears streaming yeah. down his face. I remember. And I'm thinking to myself, is this the Holy Spirit moving in him or is he crying because he's so freaked out? <laughs> a born again Christian. Yeah, <laughs> And then I'd come over to their house, and I mean, it was like these incredible nights. I'd get there at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and at 12 o'clock at night, we would still be praying, and we would still be worshiping, and we would still be reading Bible scriptures, and we would still be, you know, praying over one another. And, like, I was in the cocoon of the Lord, because... If it had happened in Los Angeles, I'm not sure that I would have had the same receptivity, receptivity yeah. or or had the time to be nurtured. You know, it says in the Bible that, you know, you're, you're spoon fed at first. It's just milk. It's just milk at first. It's like, you know, it's like you, you're not ready for solid foods. So you guys really prepared me with the milk, the holy milk. And then I was able to get to the place of being able to be spoon fed with solid food. And then I moved, to, you know. I mean, I'm far from being a perfect Christian, but I've still, I've still got a long way to go. I like to say that I'm always going to be a novice, but I'm maturing, and that's all that matters. And the Lord wants us to mature in Him, and that's happening. And now I've got this channel, and honestly, this channel wouldn't be here if it weren't for you. It really wouldn't. So well, I thank you. It wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the Lord. For the Lord, that's right. My wife always makes me say that. So can we just acknowledge that you're going to be a grandfather this weekend for the very first time in your life? I guess we could acknowledge it. Could, could we just have a toast to the fact that... To Iris. To Iris. Iris Arno. Iris Arno. First grandchild of Stephen and Kenya, and first daughter of Andrew and Aliyah Arno. God wow. bless you. God bless you, sweetheart. We can't wait to meet you. So, I had a few questions. I was wondering, like, you've been saved for a while now. How do we face the fire? How do we walk through the fire and have you had to do that yourself my personal journey is a little different i don't want to talk about my dogs bigger than your dog but everybody walks this walk different yes so i had to figure out what needs to go out away from my life you can read the sermon you can read the bible you can da -da 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 -da. But, but what is the holy spirit saying to Stephen, leading Stephen to do the things to empty out of Stephen to fill Stephen up with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I call that my joy routine. Okay, let's tell us about that after you tell us about some of the walls you've hit. She wants some bloody guts and gore! <laughs> Look, we're, we're in the craziest time in our world's history. Yes. 
we are rolling back towards the anxiety and tension of war. And I'm visiting Los Angeles, visiting you guys, visiting Eli and Haley and seeing family and all that. And in New York and in LA, clearly the level of anxiety in our culture and society today is staggering. Well, it's kind of global too. Yeah. Yeah. But to be out here, coming here for 35 years, going to my usual coffee spots, to, hey, what's up? Hey, uh, hey, thanks for my change. To, people aren't even talking to each other. I know. You say hi to somebody, they don't say hi back. How do you adjust to that, China? Yeah. Joy routine. Yeah. What's my priority when I wake up? But my has your joy routine ever failed you? Oh, yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because a lot of people are Do saying on the comments, like, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm praying, I'm reading my Bible, I'm doing it, why am I so depressed? Here's what I've learned, and it's not a cop-out. A great pastor, Jay Hazlett, down in uh, Huntington Beach, California, Sanctuary Church, he's a skateboarder. I watched him lead somebody to the Lord one time, and he said, you know, and, and, and he said, now repeat after me, and, you know, I give my life to you, and Lord, I, I ask you, listen to the words, and Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sins, and I forgive myself. He had the, it's the first time I heard somebody say in a prayer of salvation and said to the person saying the prayer, it's important for you to recognize to let go of the mistakes you make every day mm -hmm. as best you can. That's right. Now, if I get up and I don't have my, I say hi to my dogs, I drink a water, I make a small coffee, I, whatever your routine is. But do you ever open your eyes before you start that routine and lay in bed and think, how am I gonna to do today? No, I think I've invested enough in my joy routine that I get the grace when I wake up in the morning. Amen, okay. To, 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 see, when the enemy's getting ready, like in Alcoholics Anonymous, right? They'll say to you, when I was you know, getting sober, reading the big book of AA and all that kind of stuff, they'll say to you, the committee of the disease of alcoholism lives in your brain, and when you wake up in the morning, God gives you 30 seconds grace to start saying good morning to God, before that committee starts to jump on you. It's true. I hope that makes sense, but it really is what works for me to the point where I haven't perfected this. I'm a butthole to my wife sometimes because uh, I'm stressed about other things or she distracted me with this and I'm a creative guy and I'm left brain, right brain, whatever that nonsense You know is. that when you're a butthole, you're giving her an anal cramp. You realize that, right? Yeah, I imagine so. So point being, Whatever it, uh, the point I was making there with Kenya is, is I have an agreement with my wife now where, babe, sometimes there's just moments when I'm going to look at you and go, I'll be right back. And I'll be gone for half an hour just to take a walk. It's not you. It's my brain and my synapse in my brain. But I say that because part of my joy routine is recognizing that when my gears lock up because I get confused, if the devil sticks a stick in the spokes of my bike for a second, mm -hmm. you're riding those slow. Oh, that's a good analogy. Yeah. You know, like all of a sudden your brain just goes, kick, 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 not come, it does not come. Like, yeah, yeah. And I could easily say something, mm -hmm. or I could just seek a moment of grace. Yeah. So, for a second, so if my daily routine is, Hit a bucket of golf balls, do my yoga this, because that makes me feel good. Or that is another way of a moment of grace. It's taking time to myself to do this thing that makes me seek and find, hopefully for myself, peace. A one little anti-trigger mechanism for me is, I'm going to go to bed. And my wife now, she used to think to herself, what's wrong with him that he's got to take the walk? You know what she figured out? Let him, God bless him. Go take the walk, love. That's huge. Mm -hmm. That's huge. For her to, it's not even respect, for her to just not try to figure that out and take care of her and I take care of her and then we come back together and it's, it's copacetic. One, one it's wonderful peaceful. analogy, the Peace. bite with the stick. I mean, that's so perfect. And I love that's your, your joy, you. joy routine. I love that. So when you have hit these walls in your faith walk, um, your joy routine has saved you. Obviously, you must have had to make adjustments to your joy routine over the years. I'm sure it has, oh, you know, yeah. I mean, you used to text I me. I love that you just said that. Keep going. You used to text me, no Bible, no breakfast, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's big. Like, no Bible, no breakfast. I got I to gotta really incorporate that into my morning routine. So expound upon when you've had to make adjustments and why. For me, 
The joy routine allows for Stephen to wait on the Lord. The joy routine allows for Stephen to wait on the Lord. In the last year, and in the last six months, we've been home. Yes. COVID-19. Right. So I live in upstate New York on a farm. Right. For a year before that, I never said to the Lord about prayer. I never said, teach me how to be a prayer person. Mm -hmm. I never said that. Mm -hmm. I said, I will never be a prayer person. Wow, you were rebellious. I didn't mean it. I was trying to help the Lord. I don't get that. I was saying to the Holy Spirit, don't waste your time with me trying to become like a, a, a really focused in the prayer closet prayer person. That's not my thing. Oh. And the Lord went like this. <laughs> you guys checking this out? Right. <laughs> he's up, He's awake again, but he had his coffee before he took the hot bath and the prayer. Remember his little joy routine? So that year before COVID, supernaturally, I, against my will, and I mean forcefully the Holy Spirit turned my brain not to go, I think I want to start praying now, just to go as I'm being me, as I'm going through my day, I'm just starting it. But what the Lord did was he, he just kind of dropped in this different level or frequency of his presence. Amen. And all I sought to do, not even in my own intention. Exactly. All I sought to do now was to connect to that. Yes. So it's not like Kenya. Kenya is perpetually seeking to connect in prayer. Yes. I kind of want to get instruction. Yes. I want to know where to go. Right. I want to know his will. Yeah. And for Stephen, the knucklehead, OCD, ADD, edge of extroverted, but yeah. he knows what works for me. Yeah. But it only comes to me. I only get that Holy Ghost download of wisdom and knowledge because I've made the adjustments to my priorities because the Lord knows my heart. And in my heart, he knows. Yeah. And you were willing to pray for something that you didn't necessarily want. You, you knew you were sort of repelled by becoming the prayer guy, like being deep in prayer and saturated in prayer. It scared you because you really didn't think you were capable. Am I correct? Correct. I think the Lord, and it moved, takes the Lord moved in me mm -hmm. in a way that he wanted to move because he knew I was willing to go there even if I didn't want to. Right. And you had a mustard seed of willingness yes. to pray for that. Well, my mustard seed every day is, your will be done. So my point is, if Stephen's hope every day is to be used by the Lord and know that's confirmed through the Holy Spirit, only prayer shows you that. I was missing that piece. Yes. I didn't want to miss it. Yeah. But my heart was, no, I want to know that. But I thought you had to become king. Right. Right. And Who is, by the way, the most incredible prayer warrior? <laughs> <laughs> Praise God for genius prayers. Um, I mean, it's not even normal. I mean, it's normal supernaturally, I would imagine, but it's like she'll slay you with her prayers. Okay. Um, she loves Jesus. Yes. Let's, let, let me speed up to now. So, so just now, six months at home, COVID, grandbaby Iris is coming, you know, all these big events. Yes. And I'm not, I, I, I don't aspire in my walk of faith to be this reflection of something that's better than anyone. The Bible says, the gospel said, God's word says, they will know us mm -hmm. in that reflection. Mm -hmm. When we say nothing, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit will touch and speak and shadow and heal and move and do things when we don't even know it. Mm -hmm. That's how powerful and mysterious it is. That's right. But I just say all that because I'm literally sitting here today I'm California preaching, and we, you know, King and I pray for you in the show, and we watch, and you know, and he had just subscribed two days ago, so let's watch. get that clear. There was no watching. He doesn't on. know how to turn the volume up on her iPhone. <laughs> she's, a, she's a praying mama, but she ain't, she's technically challenged. But, but I see all that because I'm in a new season of peace because. I actually, for the first half of my life, 
you know, everybody sees Stephen as the old man, irresponsible, financially irresponsible, you know, running all over. I've changed a lot, but I don't worry anymore about like what the world thinks of me. You know, I just know that step by step, day by day, God's moving Keeney and I in a certain direction to be used for his glory. An that's, audience of one is enough for you. But that's all Jesus we see. Christ. That's all we see. So that's beautiful. So I guess what I what what I'm taking in from that and what I'm receiving is that being willing to pray for the things that we may not necessarily think we need or think will make a difference in our walk with God is kind of essential. And to even just pray for the willingness to be willing to pray for, um, like, very interesting that you said that you just became, I never really truly was uh, convicted that prayer was going to change anything. And believe it or not, I'm 15 years into this walk since you guys, you know, baptized me and, and, and all this. And I'm just now getting to a place where I can call him father because of all my abandonment issues with my own father. That was very difficult for me. The idea of a father loving me and, and and embracing me and, and and being the author of my soul, you know, that was big for me, really big. And now I call him father and it's so healing for me. It could make me cry. But, um, I had, more of a willingness. I always say to God, connect the dots for me, Lord. Show me how to connect the dots from Old Testament to New Testament to Holy Spirit, Father, Son. Help me understand the Trinity. Help me understand that you created the universe. You know, when, when Beckett said that in his interview, it was like, you know, an arrow through my forehead. That I'm constantly reminding myself we are not dealing with the Holy Spirit you know we are dealing with the Holy Spirit who created the heavens and the earth and the planets and the stars and the and human beings and eyeballs and babies and wombs and you know uh, animals and and all creation we are dealing with an all you know an Abba 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 you know beginning and the end God so it's um, sometimes I need to just be like kicked in the head with it because I forget, I'm a forgetter. I don't know if anybody else can you know identify with that, but sometimes I just forget things. And um, but people are in a lot of excruciating pain right now. Excruciating pain. They've lost their homes. They don't have a job. They're you know they've got children to feed. They they're having problem getting on unemployment. They believe in God, but they're starting to lose hope. So what would you? What do you say to people who are, we're very fortunate, you know, we're very, very fortunate people and we have lots of resources that lots of other people don't have. So we have to be realistic about that. You know, we have to be realistic that, you know, a lot of, a lot of blessings have been poured out onto us and we have to be responsible with the blessings that God has given us and we have to be, you know, good stewards of that. So my question to you is, for that person who is literally on their knees and flat on their face, you know, do you have a word? Yeah. Okay. You said we have a lot of resources, right? Yes. What I said earlier in our conversation was, what are you willing to let go of? See, in my life, waiting on the Lord the last 18 years has been letting go of my career in Hollywood letting go of certain things, that the Holy Spirit has led me and revealed to me that journey, that connect the dots, so that now I'm in a place where people say to me, well, how come you don't this? Now, my joy routine. How come you don't this to make money over here? Or how come, you know what I'm saying? You yes. understand what I'm saying? So it, in the... You've denied yourself certain things because... No. I have followed Jesus. Right. But he's closed those doors. No. He's given me a choice. So the point to that simply is, I think believers today who are on their face and worried about the suffering they're experiencing now, yes. I think that with the over 100,000 people who have died of COVID-19 in yeah. America, yeah. if you're suffering in the natural in these ways that are beating you down, what do we need to shift? in our priority to trust God enough because when we experience these things, he's allowing it to bring us through something, another next level or season of experience, knowledge, joy, peace, revelation. So you don't feel like God makes mistakes? 
God never makes mistakes. Right. So if somebody's in their excruciating pain right now, it's for a reason. Absolutely. My dad died when I was 17. Yeah. You said, now I've come into this understanding of my father. Yes. Most Christians really don't understand that, China. Most Christians cannot let go of their earthly father and replace that true power of love from a father who is the almighty. Amen. So he's the alpha and omega. Yes. And when people say to me, like, how do you believe the Bible? It was written by men. Have an improvisational conversation with me. Ready? I'm ready. Believe in God? Yes. Is he the creator? Yes. Did he create the planet? Yes. The moon? Yes. The sun? Yes. The stars? Yes. Don't you think it would take some kind of a measure of power to do all that? Yes. It would probably take a lot of power to do all that. Yes. To create everything we're experiencing. Correct, yes. So I don't want you to tell me yes or no. I just want to know, is it possible? Ready? Mm -hmm. So the power that could do all that, mm -hmm. could that same power control the minds of men so they could write words on pages and have those pages be exactly the words you wanted them to be? Yes. Is that possible? Yes, it is. Whenever I describe to somebody why I believe the Bible, I say, I believe it because the Almighty created the Bible. Like he created this thing you believe in, the air you breathe, that you believe he made. That's right. And then you won't believe he could do that. Right. I completely agree with you. And somebody once said, um, I believe the Jesus of the Bible who believed the Bible. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Jesus believed the Bible. Like he believed the Old Testament. That was his word. That was the word. I mean, that's what he put all of his faith in. So how could I not believe the Bible, the Old Testament? Because I struggled with the Old Testament, like Jonah and the whale and the parting of the Red Sea. I was like, what? Come on. Like that was like a lot for me. And I remember saying to you, I remember saying, so you believe that Jonah was in the whale for three days. And you were like, yes, China. I believe it's possible. <laughs> yes. Possible. Mm -hmm. But what my point is, is that, yes, you're right. He created the moon, the stars, the galaxy. Absolutely, he could use men to, yeah, he uses men to write incredible music. Right. So he can't use men to write the word, you know, to, to breathe his word. Correct. Of course he can. Yeah. And yes. every, every time I say that to people, I don't say it to be like, uh, I'm smart enough to have figured, I didn't figure that. God told me that. God, yeah. The Holy Spirit showed me that. Yeah. I couldn't figure that out. But every time I, I tell that, I give that example of a possibility, anyone I'm speaking to that ever had a doubt about how, what the inspiration of God's word is, every time I say that example or I tell that story, they'll say to me, I've never really ever heard somebody describe it the way you just did. Mm -hmm. So it gets them thinking. Yeah. That's our job. Yeah. In Christ Jesus. And our, and our lifetime is a blip on this planet. You know, it's a blip. And it's a so vapor. It's a vapor. Yeah. And it evaporates. But what I always think to myself is, is like, yes, this life is filled with, you know, it says in the Bible, there's a time for mourning. There's a time for dancing. There's a time for all of it. But this blip that we're here, it's not necessarily supposed to be. God gives me salvation. He doesn't promise me this fantastic, fabulous life. He gives right. me eternal life with him. And he forgives me of my sin, and he's going to give me eternity in, in, in absolute bliss. He's going to give me life for eternity, for the eternal salvation of my soul. That's the deal. The deal was never you become a Christian, life is going to be hunky-dory, life is going to be beautiful and perfect all the time. It's actually... The Bible says you will be persecuted. You're going to walk through fire, you know, uh, be on guard because the enemy is out to get you. And, you know, we need to know the word and we need to be, you know, dressed in the word. And so I guess, I guess it's also important when we're in excruciating pain to remind ourselves that this is part, this is like, this is like so holy that if you're in pain today, it's actually a holy pain. It's a holy pain, and to not see it as a punishment, and to not see it as, as you know, the Lord denying you. It's actually something to rejoice over. I know that sounds crazy 
to a lot of people. But if we're in pain, like it's it's also a time to rejoice in that pain because Paul said rejoice. You know, like rejoice through the pain. Was it Paul who said that? Beckett. Yes. It? it was. I'm sorry, I'm asking Beckett. Peter or Paul? <laughs> Peter or Paul? Let me just say this. Depending on the situation, obviously. Yeah. You know, if you're holding somebody's hand that's you know passing away, going home to the Lord or whatever, you know that's it's heavy. Tough. It's heavy. It's tough stuff. If you've got a kid with cancer, right? Amen. That's scary. Yeah. That's scary. But for me, another new mechanism I've learned in the Holy Spirit is like in this joy routine concept is when these moments come, when these blips come. Just like in the morning when you're looking for that 30 seconds of grace before the enemy starts to, like, you know, pitch in the head. He's a punk. He's a loser. Yeah. I'd be upset if I were him, too. Yeah. You're a loser. From the pit of hell. And that's where you're going back to. Amen. And we're going to glory. That's right. Forever. Forever. I just say all that because one mechanism I've learned now is I'm walking down the street. I'm wearing my mask. There's a guy uh, on a scooter. And... You know, I don't get out of his way, and he says something, calls me a cuss word. I got choices. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Ignore him. Da 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 But in confrontation or conflict or problem, I now ask myself, in the moment something like that, that is happening, I'll go, what am I going to learn from this? Yeah. It's the first question I ask myself. It's amazing. Instead of going, hey, what the? Or... Dang it, why is this? I'm trying to get somewhere to, I just go, like, in a moment where, ah, somebody beeps their horn behind you. Yeah. So something startles you. So that's what the devil tries to do. He's so good at it. Mm -hmm. So now I've learned, if I just, in my routine, teach myself that when these moments come at me, yeah. just ask myself the question. Yeah. Not, why is this happening? Mm -hmm. Damn it! Mm -hmm. Poor me! Is this an opportunity? Me, is this an opportunity for me to learn something right now mm -hmm. to be a blessing? Amen. I just say, Holy Spirit, activate! Holy Spirit, activate! Holy Spirit, activate! 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 Okay, I know that's the corniest thing you've ever heard in your life. It works. Give me an A. Give me a C. Give me a T. So remember when you said uh, resource. Yeah. Right. So somebody uh, said to me the other day, Jesus is the source. Everything else is a resource. Right. So, so we got to go to the source. But you went back to something I was going to bring up. Do it. You said you mentioned resources. Yes. That was Holy Spirit's now because critical, critical, foundational, foundational, understand, understand. What do I mean by that? You and a friend are on a life raft, and you survived a, a, a horrible event. You would hope your friend would never let go of your hand through that. Correct. Right? Yes. So why do we let go of the hand of Jesus so often? Yeah. He's never going to leave. He's never going to forsake. He's always with us if we allow that. If we allow that. Yeah. Do you want to know one of my stumbling blocks Please. with Jesus? Yeah. It took me a while to understand that the wages of sin are death because I have a real fear around the fact that I'm going to die and that life is going to, this life as I know it will end and I'll have to say goodbye to my kids or whatever. I mean, you never know when you could die. I could die today. But my point is, is that I never understood that the wages of sin are death. I never understood that we're paying a debt, like that, you know, this is something that's unavoidable because of the fall, because of the fall of mankind. Sin is so bad that we have to die for it, that we actually have to die. We have to take our last breath, which will be our first breath in eternity, but we have to die. We have to die. So um, for me, it's heartbreaking. I have to say goodbye to Vance. Vance has to say goodbye to me. Jameson has to say, I gotta say goodbye to Jameson or vice versa. We're all gonna see each other in a box or they're gonna see me in a box at some point. And it's really, 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 really upsetting to my soul. It's very, very upsetting to me that people have to die. Everything's in decay. Flowers are in decay. You know, the world is in decay. Everything's dying around us. We're dying from the moment we're born, we're dying. So that, it took a lot for me to understand that that's how serious sin is. I didn't get it. And now I understand that like, 
a little white lie, you know, a lot of people get mad at me when I say this, but a little white lie is kind of just the same thing as stabbing a cat. It's like you, sorry, I, used that. I don't know why stabbing a cat came to me, but. I'm a dog person, so I'm fine with it, quite frankly. But, but I don't say cats, that. I love, I love my like, cat. I love my cat. I love cats too. Okay. Please continue. But the point is, is that sin is sin, you guys. Sin is sin. And the wages of sin are death. So when people say, oh, I lie sometimes, or, oh, you know, I take the Lord's name in vain, but he forgives me, or, you know, yeah, you know, sometimes I steal from the IRS, you know, I do this, I fudge it, or, yeah, you know, I, I definitely lost it for that person, and I acted out on it, but you know what, I'm forgiven. It's like, I realize, wow, you know, this is serious, guys. Sin is for real. And the minute you can accept and realize that sin is what separates us from God, and that's why Jesus came to planet Earth, like this world, to die for sin. It was that serious that he had to send his only begotten son to die for sin. Then, hopefully, we have this epiphany and this mind-blowing experience of, oh, I get it. Like, I'm filled and riddled and crippled by sin. I am such a sinner. And until I had that, that realization, I don't believe I was truly saved. Oh, I love you. He just said he was proud of me in case you missed it because he wasn't being Baldwin and aggressive, but he, he just said he was proud of me. And I love you and you bring me to tears too. <laughs> oh, it's just funny how the Lord works. Yeah. And uh, you said you're sad about in the natural this death. Yeah. And this loss of our physical body, and we end up in a box. Right. The wages of the body sin. does, not the soul. Right. So, in the natural, <laughs> in the natural, the breakdown is physical, and we end up in a box. But in the spirit, the breakdown is sin. That's right. What kills us and causes our spiritual death is sin. Amen. Whether we choose to do it or not. Why I want to get back full circle to joy routine is what kills us in the spirit is sin. So when you make a choice in the natural for something you feel like is good, like a lust, like bad food if you're a diabetic, these deceptions in the natural that make us feel good are a deception meaning like the spiritual deception of sin, that kills us spiritually, we don't identify it, we don't recognize it. That's it. You don't see it. You feel it later. Mm -hmm. I can ask China Baldwin right now. Seven years ago in your walk with Christ, did you feel then? No. Correct. Because China has done away with the things in her walk with Christ that have kept her from the connection which... That connection empties those things out of China yeah. so that Jesus can be filled up. Yeah. Because that's my point. Those sins are in a seeking of a filling up. And that's the lie. That's right. We fill up, even as believers. Depends on what it is. Guys, I can be on my Twitter yeah. and a booty thing shows up. Or on my Instagram. Let's be honest. On my Instagram. And for a second, I'm like... And my wife will be over there or something. She'll be like, you know, I'm sitting there. Like, you're on your phone. And you're like, oh, be careful. Like, you know, nobody looks over your shoulder. Da, da, da. If I'm on my Instagram now and I see something I'm not supposed to, I put the phone down. I don't keep going anymore. So we, we still fall into sin, but we don't die. Like I was saying in Beckett's interview, we don't die head on into sin like we used to. We still fall into it sometimes, well, but we don't dive into it. Only That's Jesus, the difference. Only Jesus was perfect. Exactly. Nope. Only Jesus That's was perfect. It. That's it. That's, That's why we righteous. need him every day. That's why we need him every day. His mercies are made new every morning. But I need a whole lot of Jesus to make me go, Stephen. A whole lot. Like more than the average person. Why? Okay. Why do I need so much Jesus? Everyone pray for Billy Baldwin. Thank you. <laughs> you I need so what? much Jesus to but make me go. A, but but I feel like it's almost unnatural. I'm like, what a really, gift. Lord? What a gift. It is a gift. Thank you, Jesus. What a gift. Thank you, Jesus. What a gift. What a gift. But what's fascinating for me yeah. is, like I said, in the last year and a half, have I only come to recognize what a gift. 
I don't ignore that anymore. I don't compartmentalize my existence in a way where nine to seven, nine to five is this. And da, 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 da. Now I wake up and I go, I'm driving poor Lisa and my team of people in ministry and charity nuts. Poor Lisa. I couldn't call you back. I missed the conference call. I had to pray for someone. Stephen, that was a big conference call you had set for four weeks. Wait, you missed it because of this? No. I'm just oh, saying. Oh, 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 I was going to say. I so allow sorry. the Holy Spirit. I trust the Holy Spirit so that if I'm supposed to meet or do or this, now don't forget, don't get me wrong. If I had a court case, I wouldn't blow up a judge. Right. But if I had a court case and I was going to see a judge and I was in my car and there was a car accident and I felt the Holy Spirit say, stop. Yeah. And tell somebody the prayer of salvation because they're about to drop dead from a car accident. Yeah. Even if that sequence of events landed me in jail. Yeah, you would do it. I would stop for the car accident. Yeah. Yes. If I believed wholeheartedly, the Holy Spirit was calling me to do that. That's now, right. what does that mean? Yesterday, I drove by something. There was a person parked over on the side of the road. They had the phone. Just in Stephen's instinct, I was going somewhere. You better turn around and make sure that's all good there, Officer Stephen. Right? <laughs> he calls me MacGyver. She like, <laughs> shows me one tough cop because I played Bo Deedle in the movie One Tough Cop. Yeah. So I'll say, like, oh, uh-huh, yeah, I'll look over my shoulder and actually like, keep going, please, honey. There's yeah. cops there. I just there. say, keep it down, massive people, and nobody cares. Or <laughs> oh, you're going to sing your song? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. See, see, China has a fat... See, when I upset my wife or vice versa, I go for a walk. When when Billy Baldwin upsets China Phillips... I Baldwin, sing Shut Up Forever. And Shut Up Forever goes, Shut up forever. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Oh, wait, no, that's not it. Shut up forever. Shut your face right now. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Shut up forever. Shut your face right now, because nobody cares. Oh. <laughs> I'm so learning that song. <laughs> so, like, so like, when Jameson has their first grandchild, and I'm there, like, you know, whatever, five years in advance from now, and we're, like, we're all looking at the grandchild, and Billy's there, and he's weeping, I'm going to go, shut up. <laughs> That's when I'll sing it. I'll wait till then. I'll wait till then. Well, I love you. I love you too, buddy. And this has been like really, really, really special for me. This was fun. Thank you. Really special for me. And, you know, all I can say is thank you for having the boldness and the love, really, for me to take a leap of faith on me, even though you were saying, Lord, are you sure? Like, are you sure this is what's happening right now? Because uh, nothing matters to me more than, than, than Jesus. Right. And I love you for that. So here's what I need you to know. Yeah. You are not going to end up in a little dirt box (laughs) for quite some time. Right. In fact, who you are and all you've done thus far is nothing compared to what you will do in the future. How cool is that? Yeah, you too. From all of your success... All of your influence, all of that. I'm telling you now, you're young. You got 25, 30 more years on this planet. 35, 40. Praise God. Whatever it is. I say 25, what did you say, 35, 40? Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to like you and Michelle preaching together. Okay, oh, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, that's what's coming. Oh. But I say that because there's no way the Lord touches the lives of, of people like us. Mm-hmm. And I'm not trying to be, you know, a fancy pants here. Yeah, that Beck, sounds great. Beckett's an influencer. Right. You're an influencer. Okay. But I'm, can't everyone be an influencer? I mean, Jesus... Can I finish? Jesus doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the cult. That's right. But there's people out there right now that say, thank God for Beckett, China, and Stephen. And all they do. Because maybe they don't have to talk about it so much. That's right. Maybe they could just be quiet like all those other Christians in the music business and... Hollywood That's and right. publishing and all that. That's right. So I'm not afraid to be, you know, bold in that. Right. No. A but, lot of people comment like, "Wow, well, thank you for using your platform for the Lord." But you what know? I want you to know yeah. is the Lord's just getting started with China Baldwin. Yes. Whatever that is in the future. Yes. How wonderful is it that now going forward in your knowledge and your wisdom and your present and His presence in your life. 
the impact that will have going forward will be far greater than any impact you've had up till now. I know that for sure. That's right. For sure. Because, what a blessing. Because nothing else matters, and it's the most. It's feeding my soul the most. So, so let's all keep praying for China Baldwin and California preaching people in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for doing this interview. Thank you. Love you. Love you Congratulations too. on becoming a grandpa this weekend. Iris, we love you. We love you. Amen.